So this is my son, Gabriel. Um, this picture was taken in July of 2004, shortly after he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, or juvenile diabetes as it used to be called, is when your pancreas, for whatever reason, just stops producing insulin, um, which we all need to survive. There is no cure for type 1 diabetes, though it can be managed with insulin shots. If you are a diabetic or you have a friend who's a diabetic, um, some of these activities may look familiar to you. There's the uh, familiar uh, finger poke. You do that about 12 times a day. That's when you test your blood sugar to make sure it's not too high or not too low. Uh, you have to count the carbohydrates on absolutely everything you eat. So you can't just go out to a restaurant, order a nice dinner, and when the dish comes, start eating. You have to look at your dish and actually count how many carbs you think are in that dish you're going to eat. And you also have to plan for the dessert you might have and the drinks you might drink. Um, the reason you do this is because you have to give yourself the right amount of insulin to balance out or counteract the carbs that you're intaking. If you give yourself too much insulin, then you can have a diabetic low. If you don't give yourself enough insulin, then you have high blood sugar, which can cause long-term complications. Um, it's a lot to learn and a lot to take in as, as a parent of a diabetic child, and then for the child themselves, obviously, it's a whole new, uh, whole new way of life, a whole new way of living. Um, fortunately, the hospital that we went through has a really great training program to prepare parents and children for this new life, this new uh, lifestyle you have to adjust to. Um, during the three-day retraining process, they gave us lots of useful information. They helped us understand what would be expected um, one of the forms that they gave us was the one you see here. Uh, this is a form that you put on your refrigerator. This is the checklist of all the things that you'll need to know what to, how to do or what to do during the day. So when to give your child insulin, how many carbs they can eat, all these things. This form is broken. <laughs> it, uh, it's very confusing. The nurse actually spent 30 minutes explaining this form to us. And there are actually a couple of areas on this form that if you misunderstand, you could actually give your child too much insulin, which could harm them. After the nurse left the room, my wife looked at me and said, you've got to fix this. <laughs> so I did. Um, this is the after version. Now, the first thing I want to call out is that as dramatically different as this is, I did not add any information, and I did not remove any information. All I changed was how the information on that form was presented. And my goals for this, I had a few. Um, one, I wanted to create something that my son, at four years of age, could look at on the refrigerator and have a sense of what he's supposed to do. I wanted him, from an early age, to be able to manage this disease. And so put it, presenting this in a way where he could make sense of it was very important to me. Also, as parents in this situation, my wife and I needed to create something like this. We needed to understand what was expected of us. And at a more fundamental level, with something like this happening, you lose a lot of control. You've done everything right, you've, ate, you've fed your child all the right foods, and then out of the blue, this happens for no explainable reason. And so this was one way to assert some level of control over a very small piece, something we could say, OK, we understand this. We can improve this piece of it. Now, all the information was there. This is not an information problem. Um, and the way I think of it is kind of like this. It's like a jigsaw puzzle where you're given all these pieces of information. It's just no one had taken the time to actually put those pieces together in a way that facilitates understanding. And so for this reason, I'm calling this an understanding problem. Carl Fast, a professor at Kent State who talks a lot about these same themes, says it best. He says, information is cheap. Understanding is expensive. And that's really why I'm here today. It's not to talk about type 1 diabetes. It's not to talk about bad healthcare forms, though there are plenty of those out there. Uh, but it's to talk about this much bigger, broader problem, this understanding problem. Um, let me share another example, another makeover I did, much lighter example. While I was doing research for my book, I was reading a lot of books from behavioral economists. Um, <laughs> If you've read any of these, if you've read multiple of these, you know they make lots of references to academic studies. And one of the things that uh, you start to see after you read this is they refer to a lot of the same studies. I needed a way to see if I was going to pick up another book, was it going to give me something new or was it going to cite a lot of the same studies? 
And so I had this idea for a visualization where you could hover over the book and see which papers were cited, or you could hide over a specific paper and see which books that paper is cited in. Uh, seemed like something would be useful, and it's using data that's out there, information that's out there, which is the citations at the end of a chapter or the end of a book. Now, there are plenty more, uh, plenty more examples I could go through. Uh, I won't go through in detail, but maybe you can relate to these, making sense of our long-distance phone bills at the end of each month. How about going through a mortgage or loan application? If anyone's done that, uh, you probably went through the checklist, but if I asked you to explain everything you did, there's probably very little understanding. At least there was in my part. Um, if you've shopped for a very expensive item, like a new TV, we're given pages like this when we shop online, and they're not very helpful for actually making sense of our options. In the United States, choosing your health insurance plan is actually a very complicated process, especially if you work for yourself like I do. So these are all cases where there are understanding problems. And the information's there, but it's not been presented in a way that we can make sense of it. Um, on a very personal note, a much lighter one, I got tired of walking into supermarkets and looking at a wall of 800 cheeses and not having any clue what the differences were. So a few years ago, I set out to make sense of the world of artists and cheeses. And uh, <laughs> I can say I, I'm on my way to, to learning and understanding that world. Now, the interesting thing is I go around, I, I give variations on this theme, this talk, I do workshops about it. And the hardest part isn't actually fixing these problems. The hardest part for most people is actually spotting and identifying these as problems in the first place. I want to give you a quick little hack to help us start to identify and name these problems. Because once we name them, then we can take the step of fixing them. So next time you hear these four words come out of your mouth, I don't understand this, I want you to replace them with something different. I want you to replace them with this phrase. Why isn't this shown in a way we can understand? All right, if you say that instead of I don't understand this, if you say why isn't this shown in a way we can understand, you've taken the first step to actually fixing a lot of these problems. And that's my primary reason for presenting today, is just to make us aware of all these problems that surround us. By the way, if I'm successful, you're going to hate me for this, because you'll walk out and you'll start to see all sorts of information, or, as I said, understanding problems. <laughs> now, I work a lot with web designers, and one of the things I'm particularly critical of are common design patterns. Um, there's labels for these, there's dozens of design patterns. One that you've probably all experienced, if you've ever purchase something from an e-commerce site is what's called the grid view. Um, the grid view is when you have a bunch of product images that are shown in a tile, like you see here. And this is great if you're shopping for a purse or a handbag or maybe shoes, where your primary uh, reasons for deciding on one thing over another are in the image. But if you're shopping for something like a camera, there's obviously a lot more information than is contained in the image. And for this reason, a grid view doesn't serve the content very well. Let me show you what I mean by this. Um, if we think of these cameras as objects, you'd actually have no sense of the relationship between these. But there's so many ways you could reorganize them on a simple XY matrix, where you could place things in different areas. Um, we could place them on a crazier visual like this, where proximity to the center means something. Right? Or just a simple stack that would let us know what are the different things that I'm going to get at different price points? What are the features? There's so many ways we could present this information Yet, what we see over and over again is a grid, which is not very helpful for understanding. Now, a lot of people are talking about big data and data visualizations, and this is a conversation I'm very excited about. Um, but if you notice, most of what I'm talking about are actually small data problems that have plagued us for decades. And so I would ask, um, what about the small data problems? We've still got a lot of those we need to solve already. Um, let me share one that has been solved, uh, one that used to plague me. You may recognize these as different espresso drinks. Uh, my wife, the first few years we were married, she was a barista. And despite all of her efforts to explain these drinks to me and how they were different, how they were similar, I just could not understand the world of espresso drinks until one day I came across this infographic that uh, presents all the same information, but actually shows through these colored bands what goes into each of these types of drinks. Uh, I didn't do that. but. <laughs> I can't take credit for this one, but uh, it is a wonderful infographic for understanding espressos. Uh, now, there's actually some science behind why this works. If you uh, uh, know anything about biology and neuroscience, you know that our sense of vision is the most highly developed sense in human beings. 
And we can quickly pick out patterns, and we can quickly pick out subtle, subtle differences. That's why visualizations like this, even crazy data visualizations, why they are effective over text, is you can actually look and spot patterns and differences. Same thing with charts. You can actually see patterns. Though I have a problem with these. Um, I feel like they do a great job getting you further to the understanding, but they, a lot of us look at them and are overwhelmed, or we don't have that emotional connection like you did with the coffee cup diagram. And some people would say, because it's dynamic data, we can't make things visual and interesting. And I would actually argue that's not the case. Um, we can, absolutely. And that's one of the things I try to show um, when I talk about this. So the other thing, going back to our science graph, the other thing I like to comment on is that there are all sorts of conceptual metaphors and memories that we can tap into. Once things enter through that vision and we're seeing patterns, once things are in our short-term working memory, we can then tap into conceptual metaphors to aid in understanding. Let me give you an example. When I was uh, trying to make sense of my healthcare options, it was all a mess to me until I stumbled across this great metaphor, and that was the idea of, uh, of an ocean or a sea. And, and this is true of most, most insurance policies. You start off drowning in a sea of deductibles. And the only question is, how far do you want to be drowning in the sea of deductibles before you finally break through to the surface and can <sighs> breathe fresh air and realize the blue sky of benefits? And there's different types of benefits, co-payments, co-insurance, all this. Once I realized this, um, it, everything fell into place. I was suddenly able to more accurately evaluate the options that were being presented to me. And I don't think, when you use a metaphor like this, any of us need to have it explained to us that the deeper you are, the worse off it is, right? We know that. And I don't think I need to explain that being deep in the ocean or deep under the water is actually not a good thing for human beings who don't breathe uh, water. Another metaphor, a more subtle one, I was working with a school and we were trying to visualize student data, student performance, student reports on different areas. And I had this line where the shape of the line and the thickness of the line meant something. I was also working with a circle where the shade of the circle from a, from a gray to a green would actually mean something. And it wasn't until I put them together that I had this aha moment. Um, one, it was emotionally engaging. And when I showed it to people who would look at it, they actually smiled at this. Um, but two, when you put a line like that in the context of a face, we're biologically hardwired to see subtle nuanced differences. So suddenly, where I was limited to five or seven different kinds of lines before, now I can show 40 or 50 lines because we are wired to recognize expressions in people's lips. Um, so that's another way we can tap into those memories that people have. So I'd like to return to this diagram because you, you more than likely will spot some of these understanding problems or maybe you know of some already, but you're thinking, I don't have the skills to really fix these. And I would say you absolutely do. If you can organize a pantry, or if you can organize a closet, then you have the skills to fix these problems. And let me show you what I mean. Let me go back to this diagram. This was the after version. This was the before. And I want to run through the process, the thought process I did when I redesigned this. So the first thing I looked at was that you have time. That's organizing things. And then I looked across and said, OK, within each time slot, what are the things that are expected of me? Or what do we have to do? And once I started looking at those, I realized there's really three types of things. There's things related to the blood sugar, there's things related to food, and things related to insulin. And so I color-coded those, or mentally thought of those things differently. The next step, then, is obviously just to organize these into columns so it's easier to scan. And you'll notice it creates some holes when you do that, and so it's important to add an X to say, hey, you don't do anything here. This is intentionally blank. All right? You don't have to test your blood sugar at this particular time. Uh, the next step would be to start looking at some of this language and say, could we replace some of these words and phrases with an icon? And so I started with the one under testing blood sugar or testing your blood. Um, that was pretty easy. Go over to Google and type uh, drop of blood icon. And there's plenty of images there. This was non-commercial for personal use. Um, I grabbed an icon, dropped it in. I did the same thing for the types of insulin that my son takes, two different types of insulin. So you can actually see the literal bottles there. Um, if we strip out the back so far, you can kind of see where we are, already much cleaner. Um, let's do a few more things. Let's add some titles here so we know what we're doing. These are all verb-based titles, by, by the way, test blood glucose, take insulin, eat. Um, let's add some uh, columns and some striping to make sense of it all. And I think we'd all agree, we started with this, we've ended up with this, much better, right? 
Could you do this? Hopefully you're saying yes right now. These are organizational skills. So I want to end circling back to, uh, to my son Gabriel. This is him on the far left. Um, he's 12 now, and he goes to a lot of youth retreats where we can't be there. And so we have to figure out how can we communicate what has taken us years to learn to someone in five minutes. And the first time he went on a retreat, we gave the person who was going to be his caretaker this form. <laughs> Yeah, there was some confusion. Things didn't go as well as we had hoped. Um, the most recent time we dropped him off, though, we gave the person this form. We did a makeover on it. This took about 20 minutes of our time. We used, uh, I used Keynote to do it. Um, the same information, just presented in a visual way. And I have to tell you, when my wife gave this visual form to the same person who had watched my son previously, he started explaining to her what he was supposed to do. He understood it. He got excited and said, oh, so at this time I do this, or if this happens, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I want to close with the words that really warm my heart. He said to my wife, who was dropping my son off, it finally makes sense. Thank you very much.